Hi everyone, uh, Mark Wormsley here. I'm the founder of our Arts and Culture Network. We've um, we've we've got well over twenty five thousand members now, which is fantastic. I use these videos as a kind of measure of how we're doing, so that's great. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by one of our longest standing full members, Farah Syed, abstract artist, educator, and workshop facilita facilita facilitator facilitator facilitator. Yeah. yeah. Farah, thank yeah. you so much for joining me again. Thank you, my pleasure. It's always a pleasure, Mark, to speak with you, spend time with you. I know, I, I love it too. And I just realized we should probably rotate the works that, of yours in our backgrounds, <laughs> because if we if we do more videos, I'll change one for the next one. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Do you wanna start again? No, no, we're fine, we're good, this is fine. Okay. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself uh, briefly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm Farah Syed. Um, I'm an artist, educator and colour energy specialist. I'm based in London and I, my passion is to um, advocate art with a purpose and to make art accessible to all. Brilliant. That's great. Um, but it's, it's not, you're not just an artist and I'm so keen to learn more about the other work you do. So um, the work is fantastic and wherever this video appears, you'll find a link to Farah's website. Uh, below is it farasayad.com yes well farasayadart.com farasayadart.com and it's farah with a u mm -hmm. there we go it's very yeah. uniquely spelt which is actually good because on google it stands out so i'm happy with that <laughs> that's great yes mm. warmsley is quite unusual as well which is great i should mm. tell you a couple of years ago or when we were in lockdown i decided to go and find all the other mark warmsley's on linkedin <laughs> and and one of them became a client it was brilliant. oh brilliant but it was a nightmare because my PA at the time couldn't distinguish between the emails from Mark Wormsley or Mark Wormsley. So <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's cool. As long as nothing, you know, was disclosed, then that should be fine. No, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'd really like to, to hear more about is the work that you've done that, um, I mean, your work is wonderful. I mean, I've, I've, I, I'm a little bit of a digital collector of yours. And this one behind me, I'm, I'm reading all sorts of Amazon, Amazonian stories into, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Into wonderful. Javier, I believe this is Javier behind yes, me. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I've seen it, I've seen your work face to face um, at some of the um, exhibitions you've mm -hmm. done in the city of London, which is fantastic. But what I'd really love to, to hear about is, is the, the suggestion that um, two things really first is the suggestion that blind people or people with a visual impairment can enjoy your art mm -hmm. um, and secondly how do you, you know how do you do team building with your art so can we have those two conversations because I know you do workshops in both of those and I, I and we had a bit of a success story on your first visit to our, our networking events I think you were introduced to Tanya Lewis mm -hmm. who at the time Tanya was at the old Royal Naval College, which mm -hmm. for people, um, actually, most of the people watching will probably have seen the old Royal Naval College, because, for example, it's a, um, I think it was used in Bridgerton recently. I think um, it was certainly used at the end of Les Miserables. Um, and there's the Painted Hall, which is, is often featured so it's a wonderful spot and I know your gallery is there is close by as well my open my studio my studio is there. Studio yeah. Is there yeah 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 so yeah um, so no, that was a wonderful experience um connecting with uh Tanya who introduced me to um Corey Hutchinson um who facilitates and organizes the workshops at the old Royal Naval College we hit it off straight away and then we um they commissioned me for four to do four paintings based on the painted hall and um the so the aspects of like texture movement um shapes and colors so i and so that i created four very te heavily textured paintings from um based on the painted hall which were then used for the um workshop for the blind and partially sighted and it was a wonderful experience it really was and we had some fantastic participants so it was, uh, you know, it really, really worked out well. All of us enjoyed it thoroughly. And the volunteers that were there as well, they were fascinated. Um, one of the things in my workshop is where I show people how to feel color energies without the need for sight. And that just blew everybody away, which was fun to see. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it was wonderful to um, interact with um, 
with a, an iconic inst um, uh, painting um, uh, installation like the Painted Hall, with, and connect that with the work that I do with my art workshops for the blind and partially sighted. It was a really good amalgamation of, of the two concepts. So yeah, that was a very interesting experience for me as well. Um, uh, but yeah, no, um, I'm so, so pleased that all worked out and we're gonna be doing some more workshops as well. Oh, that's fantastic. And I know you've done them all over the world, which is, yes. which is wonderful. But so how, how does that work? Because is it as straightforward as somebody feeling the energy through touch um of a color and being able to identify it and and other people you work with have they been blind since birth or have they lost their sight so do they have some memory of the concept of color how, um, how, how does it work so it's a range of many um uh, many levels of sight and a, a range of people who were blind from birth and then people who lost their sight later so it's a range but um during the workshop what i do is um i basically explain the whole concept of the fact that we can all feel color vibration vibrations that are emitted from color and um, just to give you a very quick example color warm colors such as red orange and yellow absorb a higher amount of um, energy therefore their vi um, vibrations are of a higher frequency when they're emitted so whatever goes in has to come out so you can physically feel the warmth from a red, orange, and yellow. And then the opposite is this is the case for like a blue, green, or white, for instance. So they absorb less energy, therefore their vibrations are lower frequency, and you can feel the difference. So during the workshops, um, I position people's hands over specific the pieces that I have at the workshops are created for the workshops. They are not like the pieces behind us. Um, these pieces are created with varied textures that are interesting for somebody who's blind or partially sighted to explore. And there's always a warm area and a distinctive cool area, which I can then utilize in the color recognition part of the workshop. So literally people start with holding, hovering their hands over, uh, uh, say a red or a white. And after a few moments, I ask them which section, which hand is feeling warmer or cooler. If there is a difference, because some people would take a few times to do it and then they get it. Some people get it straight away. So then they'll put most of the time will lift the hand that's over one of the warm colors. And that's them recognizing the vibrations of the warm color, such as red, orange or yellow. It's it's fascinating. I found out about this um, via a practice called pranic healing, which is when I lived in India. And I was fascinated about energies, vibrations that we can all feel that are used for healing. But then I um, uh, went ahead and became an advanced practitioner for pranic healing, which is healing with color energy. Now, it, it's a long, it's a lot of information. We're going to go into it. But when I was hit so hard about the fact that we can feel vibrations, I went down the road of researching the scientific um, aspect of the fact that the colors have vibrations and different vibrations and it's fascinating there's not that much out there in terms of research but what I did come across was um, it basically um, verified everything that I was experiencing in real life and so when I'm delivering lectures or um, talks in schools and um, museums or institutions I always have in the powerpoint one bit that says the science bit <laughs> because mm. then people want proof don't they they don't necessarily just want to go with the hippy dippy pranic healing aspect of it but so when when I show them the graphs that show the variations of color vibrations they're like oh I get that now so um funnily enough when I've spoken to physicists they know about it but very few people do uh, you know other other people they just don't know so I'm loving sharing this with people and have quite a few um plans of different projects to you know um, uh, be um, uh, able to kind of like talk about it more and expand people's knowledge about this fascinating subject. So it's not just the empowerment for blind people to know this, it's for everybody really. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of fun with it so far, but I'm looking forward to what's coming up in terms of, you know, spreading the word about color energy. It, it, I find it fascinating and I can't wait if I get the opportunity to join one of the workshops, that would be mm. really fantastic. There are parallels in in music because um, I'm a musician by training and and was at college around the same time as Evelyn Glennie, who's a famous percussionist. 
um, and led the drumming at 2012 Olympic opening ceremony, for example. And she's profoundly deaf. And it's um, and she plays the most incredible marimba and xylophone um, and multi percussion pieces and has commissioned work and um, and but she feels it. It's mm. and she feels it in her feet. She can feel the feel it on her face. You mm -hmm. know, she can feel the vibrations. Um, and that's obviously sound, which is just effectively bits of air vibrating at different frequencies. But um, it's fascinating that there is a corollary with in, in the visual world, which is which is fantastic. But you're yeah. right. It, it had never occurred to me that and this is probably true of all attempts to be inclusive. Uh, with people of varying abilities is that we overlook that the fact that some of the some of the tactics and the things that you can do to make it more inclusive for those with a visual impairment are actually still valid for those with perfect vision because mm -hmm. I, I would love to do that I mean please do and I, when we do this together mm. I, I want to be blindfolded yes um so that I can experience the that that energy it's so i mean it, it's fascinating and I, I can't wait to do that with you mark um by the way just so you know the thing that you just described in terms of being able to hear colors is called synesthesia so um i know some i know a number of people who have that and it's fascinating so that's you know another conversation but yeah, um, yeah. so i did i delivered a workshop with atos um last year and we had, um, I think it was nine blind participants and then one participant who sighted, who wore a blindfold throughout the whole workshop. It was fascinating for him. I mean, the, obviously the, all participants um, uh, really enjoyed it and they were enlightened and enriched and empowered by what we did the whole day. But um, in particular, the participant who was sighted but blindfolded, it was a different world for him. So for him to have experienced so many different things, it opened up his mind, it opened up the um, perception of engaging with different things. And the Atos, the volunteers per participant who were blind or partially sighted were Atos employees who were all sighted. And they all, I got them all to do the color recognition exercise with their eyes closed and they all got the color recognition right. Wow. Oh, it's nice. it was brilliant. Oh my God. I can't, I yeah, can't it, wait. It does was really it, good. Yeah. Does the do the vibrations or do the um the, the, the does the energy emitted by d certain colors is that true on a screen as well as on a painting? Not as effective. Right. But but it is possible. So when you have a screen, so for instance, like an iPad or a laptop, there's a better chance of you being able to recognize the energies because you have a more a, a, you know more wider expanse of the color being that you're re that um you're trying to recognize the vibrations of it's not great it's not great but it is possible i have i have experimented a bit with it because obviously we're moving into a digital age now so there's a lot to kind mm. of like explore in that field i mean you know that's a lot to kind of like talk about right now but not yet yeah. um so yeah digitally great. It's not great but it's possible fantastic so wherever this video appears we'll provide links to, to more information so you can mm. gather more but I also wanted to ask about the work that you do for companies because um you know it, supporting the well-being of the workforce is a is a duty of care for business leaders and um so tell me about some of the projects that you've done in a corporate world with sighted people so it's it's um I deliver very tailored workshops to um, organizations depending on the size and what their needs are, and the workshops um, I, I I curate the workshops or tailor the workshops um, depending on whether they want to focus on well being um, uh, you know mental physical or emotional well being um, uh, igniting creativity highlighting how um, uh, um, companies need to, or organizations need to be um, welcoming for those who have additional needs. So highlighting the issues with accessibility to certain things and also um, them appreciating what it is like if one of their um, senses are shut down, what is the, how, how do they experience things for somebody who is blind, for instance. So it's a variation and um, it's, always the case when people who are a bit 
hesitant to be creative when they unleash their creativity it's just wonderful because they just feel enriched they feel empowered and they things are ignited that perhaps weren't before because you're tuning into a different part of your mind that works in their working in their day-to-day -day work environment as well as home as well as you know life in general so it's just been really nice to see people react in different ways overcome fears of creating or embracing interacting with art as well because I you know one of the things as you know I'm passionate about is making art accessible to all and also reaching untapped audiences so I've had wonderful experiences in these workshops with organizations as well as in galleries or everywhere and anywhere where I can get people excited about art and not feel alienated with art because sometimes people walking into a gallery find it intimidating because they haven't got a lot of knowledge beforehand about art, blah, blah, blah. When I say to them, you don't need that. Just go in wherever and just connect. Stop, explore, look, connect. And at the end of the day, it should be like that for everybody because mm. sadly, you know what it can be like in the art world. It can be a bit hoity-toity. It can be a bit overcomplicated when it doesn't need to be and mm. that what is what alienates certain people so that's what i you know want to reverse and yeah. just get everybody to engage with art because it's there for everybody i think that's wonderful i'm reminded of a saying i think that um a child dances before she walks yes. she sings before she talks mm -hmm. and she draws before she writes and mm -hmm. it's it's embedded in in all of us and um it's okay. lovely i think the work you're doing there is fantastic and um an enlightened organization uh, organization leader with a as i said a duty of care for the emotional mental and physical well-being of their employees okay. who spend so much time on the company hour mm -hmm. um that anything that can be done to 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 improve their sense of well-being and their appreciation of, of art and culture I think is mm. is fantastic Farah thank you so much for doing this chat it's it's lovely as I said there'll be links all over the place where you can find more information and reach Farah um, she has a, an entry on our directory on the website so you can find more information there but in the meantime Farah thank you so much for doing this it's been a, a great pleasure and I've learned a lot <laughs> my pleasure always um, but yeah thanks a lot Mark for everything <laughs>